we give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We come with worship. We come with incense. We come with concentrated prayer. We come because you are faithful. We come because you are worthy. We come because our lives are littered with evidences of your majesty. Let all glory and honor be yours forever. We sing your song. For you are great and greatly to be praised. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You are most welcome. You are most welcome tonight. I believe that God has an intent to accomplish in our midst. And God is so determined to bring his counsel to pass. Yesterday in our Bible study, we began to consider the energy by which God intends to actualize his eternal purpose. There is an energy. There is a resource base that he has made available that he deploys in order to actualize his eternal purpose. The grace of God. It goes in the direction of the will of God. Every time you see that God has a will, he has an intent. There is something he intends to actualize. What he does is that he moves his grace in the direction of his will. So every time you touch the grace of God, it is consistent with a certain will that God intends to actualize. The entire, entire, the entire eternal purpose of God was going to find actualization on the basis of the grace of God. And if the grace of God is involved, it means God is the one walking. He might use you as an instrument, but you are not the one walking. And it will be needful for you to acknowledge how that His grace is what is at work and not you. And so many more times in scripture you find Paul say, I am what I am by the grace of God. And in that regard, he was saying, my being is by grace. My being. Are you here? Not my doing yet. He has not gone into his doing. He's beginning from his being. And he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. When you begin to grow deeper in this plan of God that is enshrined in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, then you begin to understand the place of grace. Then scriptures like this will come to mind. It is not by power. It is not by might. It is by what? You see, in grace, it is God that is walking. So every time you see things that the Spirit of God does over and above what your ability has to offer. It is grace that is at work. When you find scriptures like the Spirit of God help at our infirmities, because from God's perspective, you are a bundle of weaknesses, a bundle of insufficiencies. And that's a good starting material for the grace of God. It's only when you acknowledge that you are insufficient that God is going to deploy His grace in your life and whether you rise and fulfill God's purpose in your life 
is dependent on whether you are able to appropriate the grace of God that he has made available. What differentiates one season in God with another season in God is the grace that is available. Because with new seasons are proclamations from heaven. Proclamations that indicate the policy that God intends to begin to implement. And consistent with this proclamation are strange dimensions of grace that he makes available. I want you to understand that grace is not the same. Grace is as different as the different needs that are required for us to pro prosecute purpose. And that's why the Bible calls it manifold grace. It is different. There is a grace that saves. And the Bible says that the grace that brings salvation, it has appeared unto all men. There is a void that God curiously created in the heart of man that once and again makes contact with eternity. That void is as deep as eternity. And once again, when the wave of eternity blows across your membrane, uh, the void will begin to speak. And then insecurity within will begin to proclaim its strength. That's an indication of the fact that you do not derive from time. You existed as a seed of eternity before you were formed in your mother's womb. And, and God does this because he has designed every man to know him. He might be an occultist, a satanist. He might be walking to kill Christians, kill people that believe in Jesus. But he was designed by God to know him. And that void is God's contact point. Because without God filling that void by his spirit, we do not have what it takes to live for God and to fulfill God's purpose for our lives. So we saw yesterday how that grace is the energy with which God drives his purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you see people without grace, they are, they are like puppets. They are trying to act out what they don't have grace to accomplish. It's like a drama. It's not real. It doesn't have any authority. But when grace begins to manifest, it's a proof of the fact that there is something to a man beyond what the eyes can see. There is a level of authority that has been bequeathed to him. And the grace with which he does the things that he has been ordained by God so to do is an indication of God's authority over his life. So if we want to measure Christianity, we measure it by grace. What's the difference between one believer and the other? Because every believer is a recipient of grace in some sense. But the Bible speaking about the apostles. It was not their title that made them different from the other believers in the assembly. It was not because they were taller than them, just like Saul was taller, the giant of Israel. The Bible says there was one factor. The Bible says great grace was what? Was upon them. The crowning indication of apostleship was the conference of great grace it was an indication of the fact that there were great works mighty works that were designed ordained by god to be done through those vessels so christians are different on the level of grace that they carry that's an indication of how much how useful they are in the actualization of god's grand plan because grace happens to be the resource by which god implements that which he has conceived as the counsel of his will so that's where we stopped yesterday hallelujah i say hallelujah Amen. then we need to proceed with a new set of readings and that will be from ephesians chapter 1 from verse 7 follow me hmm? Let your progression, let your reading, your time signature not be different from the way I'm speaking. All right. Are you then um, 
Ephesians 1. Verse 7. It was when I got home yesterday, I forgot that I was supposed to do something. Right now, I'm trying to restitute that, that position by seeking greater yieldedness just in case in the sovereignty of God it might decide to open that window again. Hallelujah. The Bible says concerning Jesus, because when you begin to do business in the spirit, then you find that there's a personality that is preeminent. If in your walk with God you have not found him, then you are not living right. Because the entire structure of the implementation of the program of God is bound on the works of one man even Jesus Christ and when you want to navigate with God you are going to have to see how critical it is to be in alignment with him in whom we have redemption through his blood this Jesus without Jesus there is no redemption it was the facility of his blood that made it possible for us to be redeemed from the ostracized position that sin and rebellion had placed us in the plan of God. We were outside of that plan. And in this Jesus, we have redemption through his blood. In this Jesus, we also have forgiveness of sins. These are big issues. Uh, I don't know if we um, have the time to find out how big these two issues are. The issue of redemption that is actualized in his blood. The issue of forgiveness of sin. It is on the account of that same blood that the possibility of forgiveness of sin becomes available. You see, forgiveness in this sense or redemption in this sense. If we, let's start with redemption. In whom we have redemption through his blood. And even the forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. First of all, let us talk about the blood. The blood. There are three levels in which the blood of God, Jesus is active. There are three levels in the study of the blood. First of all, uh, the blood has a Godward potential. The blood has a Satan word potential. The blood has the believer word potential now let's let's go quickly or gradually and excavate these three layers because every believer is supposed to have an up-to-date revelation of the potency of the blood of Jesus and if your revelation of the potency of the blood of Jesus is not up to date the devil is going to cheat you out of several benefits that is your right and due in the kingdom of God for instance in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 we want to see believer word towards the believer Hebrews 10 hallelujah In Hebrews chapter 10, uh, the Apostle Paul began to give us a lecture on the subject of priesthood. And he was trying to establish um, the protocol of approaching God on the account of the new platform that has been established, even the blood of Jesus. And he says to us in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verse 22, he says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled 
from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water hallelujah he was talking about the possibilities that are bound to us on the account of what the bible calls the new and the living way you see prior to the regime of this blood approaching god was a thing of terror because under the old covenant if the high priest was going to make an appearance in the holy of holies he writes his will before he does that because he's likely to fall on the wrong side of divine justice and if god by uh, his nature of justice judges that the iniquity of the nation is beyond the blood that is presented before him for atonement he will express his displeasure by cutting out the high priest it was always a thing of terror to look upon god and that was how fierce he was until a new way of approaching god was crystallized and that new way become became possible by the blood of jesus so by the blood of jesus there's a new way to approach and that is what gives us boldness to come before the throne of grace there's a new decorum that we need to be emboldened by in order to approach unto the presence of god and that we owe all of that possibility to the blood you see so when we now approach our approaching in itself is based on the value of the blood in the eyes of god that's the godward dimension are you here now oh you're not here all right all right all right when this chief priest takes the blood into the holy of holies before he can speak he has to present it that's the spiritual article the spiritual utensil with which he intends to gain god's attention he must bring blood this blood before god reacts either killing him or showing signs of appeasement being accomplished he will have to read the blood on the scale of justice of judgment and equity and he will put the blood in the balance of justice and if the weight of that blood by reason of his own arithmetic which is a mystery to us in the first place hallelujah i don't know how he does that because even in the case of jesus when jesus died uh, you know a woman accosted him in the garden he said i have not yet ascended to my father and if you understand the old testament he was about to take his blood into the holy sanctuary in heaven where the computers will screen it where the value of that blood will be generated against vis-a-vis -vis or against the value of the rebellion of humankind it is after that evaluation was done and it was indicated in the spirit that the blood of jesus has more stature more vocabulary more utterance more volume than the sin of humankind then redemption became possible now so i just want you to to show you in this teaching how that that blood has more value to god is god that knows the god what dimension of that blood is what gives you access to the presence of god it means there is a value that that blood has in the sight of god that makes it the basis upon which a new way was established in the new covenant to approach god so because of that i don't know what god sees in the blood but because of what he sees and because of his evaluation of his value he gives us access into his presence so the difference between the new covenant and the old is access do you understand that is what access because of this blood we now have access to god and what you do with that access will determine how far you go with God. 
if you meet a president what will you ask for sister Ruth if you stumble upon Aso Rock now maybe 9 p.m. in the night you were not even thinking of it by 9 a.m. in the morning but by 9 p.m. you were standing before the president and there were checks of Diamond Bank checks of First Bank checks of Access Bank checks of Zenith Bank and just say something now you see you can get a lot with access and so God leaves all the all the checks blank and then he gives you access it's your ability to use this access uh, that will determine your outcome and all of this access was made available by the blood from the God word perspective the devil knows the possibilities you have because of access and he wants you never to take full advantage of the privilege that God has given you so what he does is that he injures your conscience see the devil is a photographer he goes around with a camera and that time you stole meat from the pot he took a shot of it. <laughs> hallelujah the other time you stole sex he took a shot hallelujah the other time you lied took a shot he is good at litigation you know the bible calls him the accuser of the brethren he's killed in the business he can even make you condemn yourself before the court case so knowing that he cannot truncate your access because the ground of access is the blood is a solid ground not subject to any form of reproach whatsoever so what he, he, he does is that it, he wounds your conscience. As you are trying to approach, he brings the picture of when you stole. So that you yourself will condemn yourself before God. And then you will not be able to use the access that is accorded you as much as possible. Because when you stand there, you will be standing there with a complex of inferiority. That you don't even qualify to stand here. And they will soon find out. So you lose every opportunity that you would have converted to something critical just because your conscience was sore so what the bible does for what the blood does for the believer in the believer word perspective is what i just read for you in the book of hebrews chapter 10 verse 22 what does the blood do the blood is said, let us draw near with a true heart because in order for you to drink the drink that is drink indeed you will need to have a full assurance of it assurance is the currency of righteousness that I have right standing with God are you here oh my you are not you are not here you are not here this right standing you have with God has is expressed in a currency and that currency is called assurance I know you don't believe it you see what i did is that i put all the scriptures like in this my talk till now i've consulted 18 scriptures i just put all the scriptures in a presentation so that you can understand the stream of thought that is in the scriptures do you understand that it will save us teaching time because what i intend to do is to testify and not to teach I'm bringing testimonies from the pages of the book of Ephesians. Are you here? Oh, you're not here. You're not here. Okay. Jesus, let me give you a scripture. And that's why I didn't come with my note because I'm preaching from my spirit. From Monday, I've been preaching from my spirit. Yes. Sometimes, if you know you have studied the Bible, trust the Holy Ghost and go without studying, without note. Let him speak then you will discover he will only speak to the extent that you have studied you yourself will become your limitation because in inspiration he brings to your remembrance the things that he has told you if if you have not put it in the data bank it can't come out i challenge you to study the scriptures especially in this time where we need to look at everything before we believe 
right now things that we thought were authentic when we put it under neon light we see counterfeiting of all kinds so believers are enjoying to imbibe the culture of the Berean people Berean Christians all right let me take you somewhere quickly are you still with me because I made a statement now you shook that means you are not acquainted with the scriptural I I drew that thought from and it's in the book of Isaiah hallelujah so let me get the scripture from the book of Isaiah Isaiah where where am I where am I where am I Mm. Oh my God. Mm. Isaiah, 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 Chapter. Okay, give me two minutes. I've lost all right um, Isaiah chapter 32 quickly let us start from verse 17 Isaiah 32 from verse 17 because I made a statement and I said that the assurance is a currency that derives from your right standing with God without right standing the proof of your right standing with god is an assurance that you have inside of your spirit man uh, it, that's the same way you know that you are saved because the spirit of god does what he bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of god that assurance of being his own property being the product of his efforts is a critical legal tender in your transaction in the spirit and so Isaiah comes to the rescue in Isaiah chapter 32 verse 17 and Isaiah said and the work of righteousness shall be peace what righteousness will produce is peace whenever you find that you have peace with God it is because you have right standing with God you are in alignment with God have you heard the scripture that says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness oh my it means when you believe what god is saying you become right with him and then when you are right with him the proof that you are right with him is that right there in your heart there's going to be what peace oh you're not here there'll be peace that peace is a proof that i'm right with the monarch i'm right with the king it's it's a currency because you will need that assurance in not that for you to come into his presence boldly that is the ground upon which you stand is the ground of righteousness and righteousness fundamentally basically is is what you hear a judge proclaim when he's given a judgment you say you are discharged and acquitted and the reason why God could call you discharged and acquitted from the scene of Adam which we all inherited that act of rebellion the reason why God could call you discharged and acquitted was because of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is evidence that the claims of divine justice has been satisfied. And on the strength of this blood, you can become everything that God intended concerning man before he created. The barricade, the barrier has been done away with. And now your possibilities are limitless because God grants you access now give me that scripture quickly isaiah chapter 32 verse 17 the bible says and the work of righteousness shall be what peace and the effect of righteousness is what so quietness and assurance assurance is that currency that is an indication of your standing with god oh my god you are not here now you can't fight if you don't know this if you can't do spiritual warfare if you don't know this do you know there's a piece of the equipment that is in the arm of God that we call the blessed breastplate of what? 
what, what's the what's the work of the breastplate of righteousness what's the work what does he do it what oh my god i know you will say shut the only thing the breastplate protects is your conscience if your conscience is not straight not aligned you can't fight there's a hole in your armor So I could stand before God today and the peace I had while I stood before him the assurance that was furnished upon my heart was proof that I was in right standing with God hallelujah those days we were in a certain movement and they said that the proof that you are in right standing with God was that your your trousers should be suspended and we did everything the people say we should do but yet our heart had no peace then we saw that what we we're doing was religion and Christianity is not a religion because it is it is life it is something that started with blood so it is experiential it is a new life God gives us and that currency of assurance that we see in that scripture is an indication of the fact that I'm right with God it's not a function of the suspension meanwhile as you walk with God he will change many things he will change the way you talk he will change the way you dress he will even change your haircut sometimes he might even come into your wardrobe and say don't wear jeans anymore you know why you don't know why they he that blood was your bride price so he owns you as a property and he can declare his ruling instructions for your own unique specimen and that is not a doctrine for the church you can't come and say now nah, there's a new revelation because god said don't wear jeans because the jeans that you wear is uh, is the is, is caught everywhere so you are naked so you say hey you came in and he quoted you but that doesn't make it a doctrine that's how him as a king over your life had decided to manage your affairs do you understand yes. you see you don't even know yourself he's the one that knows you and that can reveal you to you so he's the best person to follow because he will lead you apart on the path of the destiny he ordained for you and on that path of destiny he will exercise government over your life as an individual apart from the co congregational government there is an individual scope of government and his administration is so robust and so detailed that he has an article for government for every member of his body the devil doesn't have that kind of administration because he needs to manage people as a group he can't treat people as individuals oh you don't understand what I'm, I'm just trying to show you the administration of God the fact that two of you are believers doesn't mean that, that the dealing will be the same God might totally ignore something he's dealing with in his life something is dealing with you desperately upon he might ignore that subject in the life of the next one that's why the Bible reveals that they, they that compare themselves with themselves are not wise you are not wise enough to know the depth of God's dealings on the life of a man the Bible says that we should come boldly with a full assurance of faith assurance what does that mean I mean right standing with God you get that then number two having your heart sprinkled from an evil conscience because the devil is going to attack your heart so that when you appear before him your inferiority will not allow you to engage him properly so that evil conscience the blood of Jesus is the antidote to deal with it many believers do not know the value of the blood in this regard 
that you have asked God for forgiveness, but you still feel guilty. You know what you, you do? You sprinkle your heart from that with that with a blob. It will diffuse that bad conscience. Many people don't know that. They don't know that. Because you, you have not had need to always visit his presence. So you don't know that there are times that the devil is going to put obstacles. And the reason why he made your heart such is because he has a picture and evidence of how you lost your anger. And he says, see, this angry man wants to go before. Meanwhile, you have confessed the anger, but he's still accusing you. And then what do you do? You purge that heart by sprinkling the blood of Jesus and you sprinkle away that evil conscience so that you can enter into his majestic presence. So that's the second dimension of the blood. The God word, believer word. And then the third dimension is Satan word. For the Bible says that he overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimony. Are you with me? Now, how is it that the blood of the lamb helps you overcome the devil? You know the blood of the lamb is equivalent to receipt, payment receipt that I was paid for. So when you raise the blood, you are telling the devil, see the receipt, I was paid for. There were many times that Satan will come around your life, giving you instructions through pressure called lust, so that you can indulge your flesh once and again. And those instructions they come like persuasions what you do is that you show the devil the blood these persuasions you are bringing my way are, are you with me it's unfortunate i've already been bought only my master can give me instructions lost is not strong enough to determine my navigation because i am bought and they overcame. If you know how many times I presented the blood, you say you have forgotten that I'm not, I'm not property on the shelf. I've been bought and taken, and the blood is proof that my price was fully paid. They overcame him. The Bible says by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. Did you get it to that point? So the Bible says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. The forgiveness of sin. And I need to make this statement quickly because I'm trying to paint the picture of the way God ordained for the implementation of his eternal plan through grace in time. As you walk with God, you are going to miss many things. That's a promise. And as you begin to grow in God, the things God will become sensitive about in your life huh? are the things you never thought God will ever be conscious of. If you know grace, you should be able to fully conquer fornication all those things when you start growing are you with me because let me tell you the key to conquering that just in case you are struggling with that now you know i told you yesterday that if god wants to build he builds with grace that's the currency that's the funding god makes available to ensure that his purposes come to pass and it happens to be that grace is in his spirit because the bible says that the spirit of god helped our infirmities the resources through which we are helped is in the spirit of god the spirit of god is the source of grace is the one that administers grace grace comes from the lord and it is administered through his spirit in your life so the source point from whence you get grace is the workings of the spirit of god in your life so every form of insufficiency whatsoever is intended, designed to be supplied for by the grace of God, which is in the Spirit. For the Spirit helped 
away from it is for we know not what we should pray at we as we ought but the spirit himself make it intercession for the saints in groanings that cannot be uttered are you there all right so in romans chapter 8 the scriptures reveal to us how we take advantage of the grace of god there are two things that are outlined in the book of romans chapter 8 the first is walking after the flesh the second is walking after the spirit if you want to get spiritual results you cannot use the flesh pattern the flesh pattern is a pattern of insufficiency that's what you did when you made a new year resolution that i won't lie again i won't steal again i won't fornicate again this is my 2020 resolution and you 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 labor in january you labor you labor you labor there were temptations 12 temptations to fornicate you labored you labored and then by march you had paid back all the times you labored because you were in the flat you were laboring with 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 resources that were insufficient hallelujah so, so that's the way of the flesh the way of the flesh will always bring you to a definite expectation a place of defeat and just in case you woke up one morning and you re realize that where you woke up from was a bed of fornication it means it was the way of the flesh you went and you always have defeat if you go follow that pathway and that's what the bible means when you say the righteous man falls what do you know what that means it means as long as you keep following the way of the flesh you will get the same results which is what defeat so no need for you to try because the way of the flesh will always leave you to re to defeat because it doesn't have sufficient resources to uphold the expectations of god for the new creation so the way of the spirit is the offer and the way of the spirit begins by acknowledging that you are insufficient and many times before stubborn believers can even acknowledge that they are in insufficient they will have to sin first you have to be embarrassed by a situation where you fell into sin and then it becomes clear to you because prior to that time you were saying i'm disciplined you know i fast on tuesday i you know i pray in tongues i'm from a good home okay so such a person is not a recipient of grace because he has not acknowledged his inadequacy sometimes for god to help you you have to fall into sin and then in the shame of falling and the realization of the insufficiency of the re resources you were deploying you become a wonderful candidate to walk the path of the spirit just in case you are here you made miss you made a mistake maybe in your marriage and um so many things are hurting in your life your life is out of joint is out of place it doesn't look beautiful and you are wondering if you will ever recover i tell you something i know a currency it is called grace in fact i knew that in this study i might be tempted to go to the book of isaiah chapter 61 to show you the protocol of how god makes beauty come out of ashes if ashes are your starting material you are good you are very good because you see grace is not a natural resource like money grace is a spiritual resource grace is is a token of the riches that are bound in the spirit you know before we began this journey in the book of ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 the bible says god that lavishly blessed us with all spiritual what blessings in the heavenly realms i know you forgot that that is linked to what we are talking about because you didn't ask what are the blessings for did you ask you didn't ask the bible saw the finish you say hey, you didn't ask that now that we are blessed what what are you blessed for because you have not done anything just like adam was brought into the garden of eden he didn't do any work he saw papa saw mango and you know he didn't ask why all these but he was already there before he came 
and that's how the environment the platform of the new creation is god put blessings there to be inherited even before you give your life to christ so like adam you entered into a world that was fully decked fully funded fully furnished i, I know that's opposed to our poverty stricken mentality that everything is scarce this island i speak of there is no scarcity and that means the resources that have been deployed to make you what god has ordained you to be there is nothing that can make it short and if in the supply chain there is no shortage then deliverables or economias as as the greek calls it the distribution can reach even the villages so every part of your life is catered for in the scheme that i speak of are you still with me oh my all right let's take a look ephesians 1 i need to show you the riches are you there verse 7 in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins and all of this is according to what the riches of what so his grace is a major resource and forgiveness is one strand of the riches that are available therein redemption is another strand it is grace that makes salvation possible have you read the scripture that says by grace are we saved we are not saved by faith we are saved by grace but it was faith that was the instrumentality by which we could appropriate what grace was offering so redemption is a fruit of grace and grace is the totality of what we call the riches in the house of our christ so it is by grace that you become it's by grace that you are and it's by grace that you will be so it's good for us to understand what grace is because if god intends to make a man what he does is that he makes grace available and i say that grace will never be afforded you until you come to a point of a perpetual acknowledgement of your inability and for many of us you are so hardened and so confident in your limited self and in order for god to help you he will allow you fall into sin when you see your wretchedness then you will know how much you need grace and it will be a permanent scar on your soul that will lead you in humility to the place in the spirit called the throne where grace is sourced hallelujah and that's why you will know who sought grace especially if we take turns to preach you will know the people that prayed that sought god there is something beyond their speaking that gives god an opportunity to stretch forth his hand to do things things through the window that the administration makes available that preachers cannot do it's an indication of the fact that his ministration made available spiritual resources to the congregation that was listening to his voice hallelujah the first thing that we need in order for us to be able to access grace is to acknowledge our inadequacies oh my you need to see me pray you need to see my heart when i pray you will know that i have no confidence in any potential whatsoever that i may have we have is of is of no consequence to god without grace hallelujah that your potential cannot stand in the way as a substitute to grace when a motivational preacher is preaching he tells you to dream he tells you to dream big then he tells you to get ready to walk out the dream that fulfillment is for workaholics oh my god you will walk old and when you are old you will find out that you were wrong because this template that i speak of is a template of grace hallelujah where you find paul say that i labored more than them all yet not i but what the grace of god you will never labor enough to qualify but the grace of god makes it possible for you because god strengthens you with might by his spirit in the inner man 
there is a mad mad attempt to move preachers from preaching the gospel to preaching positive thinking and making people cerebral grace is not cerebral spirituality though is not a friend of mental slothfulness don't get me wrong but intelligence is not wisdom there is something beyond the cutoff point of the flesh that grace makes available and if god wants to make one strong what he does is that he makes him able to recognize that resource in, in himself called grace for the bible says we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth hallelujah full of grace and truth when you begin to shun the path of truth grace will begin to recede from your life oh grace is a, is a cousin of truth and they walk hand in hand it's like the other side of the coin it is on the ground of truth that you will find grace and when the lord calls the scriptures call the church the ground the pillar the ground and the pillar of truth that's what makes us a community of graceful ones and if god puts grace upon your life it makes you indestructible it doesn't matter how far the enemy tries to destroy you he will be shot in his attempt at taking you down because grace is spiritual is the energy by which God implements his policy and with grace is a preservation quotient with grace is an insurance policy God protects when he bestows grace and the Bible says grace is a measure of the riches that is in Christ hallelujah I just explained that verse that's not where I'm going in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace wherein he had abounded toward, toward us in all wisdom and prudence that means his grace was crafted in wisdom and he administers this grace with great prudence are you here or oh, you are not here you are not here I know most of you want to be millionaires but he has not given you grace to enter into that dimension even though it is possible there is grace for that everything you become in the household of God will be on the ground of grace but you see he administers grace with great prudence it means that you must have shown records of faithfulness in previous endeavors before new lines of grace are made available to you in the story of grace in the testimony of grace um your past record of faithfulness must be brought on the table before fresh grace is made available to you hallelujah now barrister can you help this young man help him help him so that he, oh my god oh my god you see we are messengers we are mere messengers we are very limited people if god decides to shock my spiritual senses i can't help you some people visit me in the morning even before i wake up thinking that there's salvation in me oh my god i can only help you if grace is made available allow the man look for grace allow him you that you came there 6 a.m doesn't mean your salvation has come it's a man you met but it's a man that has grace that can minister to the whole world our expectations are so high when we don't support such a man in prayer to ensure that he can find the angulation that is needed for him to sustain a veritable gradient for this supply of grace you don't pray for the person you are going to meet and you're expecting to draw something from him that's wickedness and i've seen such wickedness over the the, the years the person cares about only himself about his trouble let's go let's go to pastor's place yeah we didn't inform him but what yeah <laughs> he doesn't know that we spend from grace and i come out when i see the people i i commune with my god 
I say your task that you have given us, only you can fulfill it. My body is already strained with weariness, but I've not scratched a bit of that which you want me to do. The needs of your host, your mighty host, is, is unsearchable. You yourself will need to come do this mission. And then he will say, that's why I strengthen you with grace. Grace is the essence of Christ. When he died on the cross, and he, it was grace that came out. Everyone that has been a recipient of the grace of God becomes indebted to Jesus. Indebted to him in terms of loyalty. Indebted to him in terms of faithfulness. Indebted to him in terms of worship. Because there are other things apart from God that would like to lay claim to your soul as objects of worship. And as you journey with God, you will need to choose Jesus today, tomorrow, till the end of time. And when you become a new believer, it is easy for you to choose Jesus. But when you start running for 57 years, you might forget some lessons you learned earlier. And that's why we need to pray for every man of God to finish strong. The people that were preaching salvation can begin to do new age at the age of 70. Having worked with God for 57 years. Are you with me? It's just like a marathon. You know, when you start running, you, are, you will be doing like this. <coughs> but when you have gone around the pitch twice, before you move your, your leg, you, you do. <laughs> That's how the journey is. And it's only those that have inner stamina, those virgins that have extra oil that will survive it. Now, most of you are not reaching out for intimacy with God. You are not building any relationship. You are not building anything with Him. You are not dying before Him so that He resurrects you every morning. You don't do that deliberately. What you want is power. So that you come and wait. You name and claim. You declare and clear. Some of us love him. Be clearing. We will be holding his, his arms. and pleading with him to drop levels of grace. And when the time comes when your strength fails you. You will find some people still able to cover great strides. And they will not look to the left or the right because in the place of intimacy they found several secrets that believers that are in a hurry will never see it's more difficult when you are older because you are likely to trivialize very basic things that hold the strands of mercy on your soul may the lord help us in the name of jesus it's also possible for you to become uh, careless right because you've known god so much seen so many miracles and you think that there is a different mode platform from whence he deals with you oh even great great prophets like elijah had to weep to ask for another chance and they were never given it is not everybody that is afforded the opportunity the privilege to have another chance so i don't want to wound him I don't want to injure him. I want to be able to come and stand on a pulpit at the age of 80 and tell you that in all my journeys, I fell on no woman. I took no bribe. There was no darkness in my heart. It was purged at his altar. I'm not afraid of death. And if I fall today, don't weep. Because I know him whom I have believed. And I'm confident that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Such men, Satan will protect them to live longer. Yeah. You know why? Maybe they will become weak in the process. And he will find occasion. But in the brilliance of the grace in their vessel, Satan knows he holds no chance with their soul. Because they have loved one. And they have loved one only build intimacy look for him take a stroll walk on the street and talk to him in the cool of the day keep doing it in six months time he will start talking back to you 
I bullied myself into intimacy. You might think I'm walking. You don't know I've gone far. That's where wisdom comes. That's where life breaks forth. And the eyes of your understanding, they are enlightened. Things begin to break out in the spirit. And you know that God had a complete package for your life and for your destiny. But Satan always comes to try to mess things up. I saw the glory yesterday night as I was on my table just doing one or two things and then the light came. And then I saw the visions of God. We are just about to start. We are just about to start. But you know what? Every day I try to envision my end in the marathon. If you refuse to let grace go, you'll be strong in the end. Some people met money and they felt money was a better God. And then they didn't know when they began to veer off. It became about money. They began to prophesy for money. They received money from where they should not receive it. Compromises on all levels. Meanwhile, the gift of the Spirit was still there. Burning with fire. Burning. Those are the foolish virgins. They will become weak when they are older. They will wither. They will wither. And they themselves might contradict themselves. In the end of their journey, the things they preach against, they will begin to leave it. Leave it. It's because there was the insufficiency of the flesh began to manifest again. Hallelujah. Because grace was not available. It is grace that covers a mortal man. We are all naked. But when grace comes, it becomes a clothing. And those that know this clothing will never want to be naked. Never. 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 Never again. Yes. Will you be naked? As you bathe in grace. And if you weep, don't weep before human beings weep before the throne from whence grace is found because grace is the resource that was designed to help the infirmities of men the infirmities he said all these things were according to the riches of what of his grace the next time you, you feel oh my mom died my dad died I'm alone you are wrong what you need is grace 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 is the secret behind the story of transformation Satan is a bad master Mammon is a bad God but Jesus what he does is that he makes grace available from one level to the other and it is grace that is at work not you and so Paul could boldly say that it is no longer I but it was Christ that lives inside of me what he was saying was more radical than what the Jewish zealots hoped for they hoped for an emancipation but the radical thing that Jesus offered us was not change what party goes with the slogan of change you still remember the party where are we now we didn't ask for whether the change was going to do change for the better change it was changed without reference and we went for we went for change but in redemption god offers us something more than change not change but exchange exchange is no longer i that live it but it is christ that's what grace makes you grace exchanges you because you are the insufficient one you are the liar you are the incapable one you are the one that cannot keep a conversation without losing your anger but when grace comes it is christ that is living inside of your vessel and your words your actions your thoughts your frequency the things you say yes to and no to is by the power of the living christ and paul could testify it is no longer i i wanted to go far that's how much we have time for maybe we'll just continue like that um today is what okay we have a break tomorrow and we'll continue on friday the testimony from the book of ephesians it took paul 17 years to find the utterance 
to communicate the things that I'm teaching. He saw beyond time. He was given the privilege to look upon the content of the council meeting of the Godhead. Yes, I know it was John the Beloved that saw farthest into the eternal past. And two times in his Gospels, he wrote in the beginning. Moses is in the beginning in the book of Genesis was the beginning of creation. But John saw further than what Moses saw into the past. If Moses was a great prince of prophets, then John was greater. For the John saw a beginning where there was a personality called the Word of God. And that personality, upon his discovery, he found that that personality was God. The treatise we call the book of John is an investigation into who that personality called the word of God is. Because he found that the activities of the Godhead was centered around this genius. For all things were made by him. He was the ad administrative component of the Godhead. And without him was not anything made that was made. If you read the writings of John, it centers around a man. What's his name? Jesus. That's the source of grace. If in your walk with God, something becomes more exalted than him, you have feared of. Your eyes have suddenly become blind. You no longer see. Many people started well and then became blind on the pathway. I choose to retain my sight, to look only on his glory, to look on his splendor as his his countenance enlightens the pathway for every step that I take. Remember that your life in the spirit is a story that God is telling from heaven. It's on that note that I invite us to stand. Give me that song there. Can you sing this song from the depth of your... Just forget, forget that you came with a Bible. Forget your environment. Forget the environment. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. blindness that will be done away when you see the grace of God. There is a blindness. And then suddenly you see the beauty that is in him. The beauty that is in Jesus. Then every other thing begins to lose its relevance around your life. The things you felt were the best things of life. They lose their place because of the brightness of his face. Oh my God. That's when you really begin to see.
ma 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 ma